previous on Eric C. Alright, so today I want to get started working on the Gibson Classic. I'm going to go over things and take measurements before I change anything. Went over, checked everything, the guitar is in tune. The neck has 12 thousandths relief inside of it. I set the bridge where I want it as far as the action height goes. And uh, so now I'm just going to check out the uh, nut and use the strings that's already on the guitar. They're nines. I'm going to set this thing up with a set of Ernie Ball Slinky nines. All right, so what's going on, everybody out there in YouTube land? If you hear any noise in the background, that's just the furnace turning on or running right now. Um, it's kind of cold out here in Chicago, so we kind of need to heat. Anyways, if you watched previous videos about this guitar, the first and second parts, you would have noticed that I've done some work to it a little bit uh, not so much in the first video compared to the second video which was pretty long sorry for putting you guys through that but anyways uh, first video got a little bit of the setup done with the stock strings that came on the guitar and second video I ended up doing the nut filing to get the action height where I wanted it to be at the first fret so now we're gonna go into doing a little bit of checking things out and the first video I basically kind of set the guitar up around about of where I wanted it to be and now the strings have had plenty of time to stretch because I've been slacking off doing other stuff uh, instead of playing around inside the shop so let's get to it make sure this thing is still up to par Alright, so the first thing that I want to do with this is kind of check the neck relief. All right, I already know that the action height at the first fret, that's not going to change unless there's uh, more or less relief in the neck or if the action height has been adjusted at the bridge. So, capo at the first fret, fret the 17th fret, and see where I'm going with this. And... I'm liking right where it's at right there. It's rubbing the string, but it's not pushing the string upwards, which that's what I'm looking for. All right, so I did oil the fretboard, and I did put a new set of Ernie Ball strings on here, in case you're wondering. I took off the other ones that were stock on here, threw them away. Uh, so next thing I want to do is check action height. Guitar is already in tune. and see if the action height has changed at all from where I set it. So I'm going at the 12th fret, can also go at the 17th fret, there really should not be too much of a change going from 17th to 12th. And I'm looking at right at 564 fourths, and I'm going looking at right at 564 fourths. So on this side of the neck, I want a 16th, and I've got a 16th. Now, if you wanted to go over to the 12th fret and go by 16th, it's like a little hair over the 16th. Not much at all. So action height didn't change at all. But the one thing that I do want to do with this is this tail piece has got to come up a little bit. I'm noticing that the strings are resting on top of the bridge. Now, when I got this thing, I had to lower the bridge down to get the action height to where I wanted it with the stock strings on it. So I can imagine that this was uh, more of an angle and really touch into strings compared to what it is. It is up a little bit, not by much, but uh, I do have to raise it up some more. So I'm going to do that right now, and that's also going to change the tuning of the guitar by doing this. So I'm going to have to retune it once I get that done. So I need my large flathead screwdriver. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to slide a piece of paper underneath that. So get yourself a piece of paper and right now there is no sliding a piece of paper under that. So I'm going to adjust this right now. I want to raise it up a little bit. Try doing this without touching or doing anything to the finish. 
Oh, I actually got to raise it up quite a bit. Let's go on this side. Check this side out too. It's getting there, but still has to go up some more. All right, I can slide the paper underneath it. And now I can slide the paper underneath this side. A little bit more. That's good. Get this side moved a little bit when I was adjusting the other opposite side. That is much, much better. Much, much better. Alright, and that also might change the angle over here a little bit as I adjust the intonation. So now I gotta go over and retune. Alright, so she's in tune. Now what I want to do is I want to set the intonation before I set the height of the pickups. So let's get on to that. All right, setting the intonation. First thing you want to do is make sure guitar is in tune. Remember, you're using a wrong size screwdriver on whatever you're working on is not going to be good when that screwdriver slips and ends up messing up your nice little project that you're working on. So I got in playing position right now. And I'm just fine-tuning the string. All right, so 12th fret. Probably have to go forward. Yep, and I go forward a little bit. She's right on. Okay, I don't have to do anything with that one. That one's got to go backwards. That one's got to go backwards. Quite a bit. Just a touch more. I don't turn these as much as maybe some people do. I only go, you know, very little at a time when I turn these. Not even a full turn. A little bit 
bit more. Tune that string. Just gotta go back a little bit. Bingo. Let's go back a little bit. I gave that about a full turn. A little bit more. Another full turn. A little bit more probably. Maybe another full turn. I can see how close they are over here. And this is the high E string is up pretty high. Bingo. That's it. Now I can take my piece of paper and kind of judge how much I got right here. Not bad. Not bad. This side can actually go down a little bit. Let's see what these other strings are. Oh yeah, that's this side can go down quite a bit now. See, changing the intonation also changes your act break at the tailpiece. I'm only giving this about a quarter turns. Now it's starting to grab, so I want to kind of bring it up just a little bit. Let's see this side here. I want to raise just a hair. Maybe a hair more. Now it's going to be out of tune. But the intonation should still be about the same. 
intonation should not have changed at all. Good. 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 Make sure everybody's still in tune. All right, now the next thing I want to do, which is the last step of this, is set the height of the pickups. All right, so I got the base side right here. Got my Phillips screwdriver. Fret, the last fret, and we are way closer than what we were before. Flathead, not a Phillips. Need a trouble side. Okay. Go down a little bit more on this side. And if you don't like the way it sounds, this is just basically a roundabout of the pickup height. If you want to be a little bit more aggressive, then you can adjust them up just a little bit more if you wanted to. Wow, it's up really high. A little bit more. I'm going to go up with it now. Just a little bit. Let's check the other side. down up a little bit up a little bit more all right check the other side again down all right like it all right so that's it I am done and uh, yeah one thing I have to say now, I know my second Gibson video was about the traditional and I kind of nitpicked a lot of things that were kind of wrong with the uh, guitar, more finish than anything else. And I had to send one back because uh, at first I thought it was just a nut that was a problem because it looked like somebody really uh, kind of like a child took a file to it and just kept on going. And... Uh, 
Then I noticed a crack by one of the screws that is on the input jack plate. And uh, I sent that one back. The second one that I got, the nut was a little bit better as far as condition-wise goes. I could work with it and uh, get the action height where I wanted it and everything else. And the rest of the guitar seemed to be pretty good as far as uh, everything. And it still is good. The only thing I nitpicked pretty much was the finish on that guitar. And there was, like in this area, there was a lot of orange peel. They could have sanded a little bit better and stuff. Um did see a few things that was going on with the binding around the body. There was a nice lip around the edges of the body and the binding. Uh, I have to say, now this guitar here was either during the, uh, what the hell was it, bankruptcy? Or after the bankruptcy of Gibson that happened just recently. And I have to say, they really upped their shit as far as the finish and quality goes of the guitar. Now, mind you, you know, any guitar that you get out of the box straight from the factory is going to need a setup unless you like to play it with either high action at the first fret or all around high action to begin with. And a lot of times, depending on conditions of weather and humidity and stuff, the neck can either change on you or stay the same. Now, I kind of go over everything a little bit to set up the way I like them. Um, you know, it's kind of like a little bit of a thing. Plus, it makes it easier as a, I still consider myself as a, a new player as far as guitar. Uh, and it does make it a lot easier to play on your hand as far as fretting goes. Your hand doesn't seem like it gets as tired as quickly. And uh, it just feels a lot more comfortable to set up the guitar to how you would like it to be set up instead of struggling to whatever it's set up to. But I've noticed with this one here that the the binding, like it's around the edges, the binding over here, it's not uh, like the binding is not sunken in like on the traditional that I've got. Also, besides my fingerprints being all over it, uh, the finish is, is very nice. I mean, even over in this area over here, they got very close to the neck and sanded it properly. I'm really, really surprised. Overall finish, even on the back, is, is very, very nice, besides my grubby fingerprints being all over it. And I have to say that uh, they either up their game or um, they're starting to get back and carrying what they make now. And if that's the case, then uh, you know, I'll be buying more Gibsons in the future. Uh, but as of right now, I'm liking what I'm seeing. And if they're kicking up the quality control to make it better for themselves to sell their product now instead of kind of like overseeing certain things through quality control and letting it go out the door that way uh yeah i would be uh, more of a future customer of gibson so there you have it folks that's my story i'm sticking to it and this is basically the end of the setup for the gibson les paul classic and uh i am going to get a I mean, I'm going to pick up a studio. Um, just haven't figured out when I'm going to do this yet. But, uh, yeah, I will be picking up a studio. And I do have an unboxing to uh, put out there pretty soon, too. Actually, it's going to be put up with this video. Two separate videos, but it'll be there. Anyways, you guys take care. Have a good one. And hope everyone's staying warm. And uh, rock on.